Hey programmers, welcome to the very first video lecture of this course. So what I want to go over in this video is how to set up your development environment. We're going to have to do a few installations. And then of course, I'll show you how to write and run your very first program. And so what you want to do as you watch this video is actually follow along on your computer. That way you don't miss a step. So to start, what I want to do is install a few things. Let me hop inside my web browser for me. That's Google Chrome. You'll just want to hop into your favorite web browser, whether that's Firefox or Internet Explorer, whatever you have. So now that I'm in my web browser, what I want to do is navigate or search up nodejs.org. And you're going to be given a page just like this. What you want to do is perform an installation and download the LTS version. So LTS just stands for a long term service. This is going to be a version of Node.js that is maintained for a pretty long time. It's going to be very stable. So go ahead and download and install that. And in the meantime, what I'll do is kind of give you the rundown on what Node.js is. And so in this course, we're going to be learning about the JavaScript programming language from scratch. JavaScript is really a great language to learn as one of your first programming languages because it stands alone very well. In other words, in the long run, we can use just JavaScript as a single language to develop a full web application, which we're going to build up to in this course together. And so while JavaScript is the programming language, what we're going to be using is Node.js to actually execute our JavaScript code. Just like it says in this home page, right? Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. In other words, it's like the thing that we use to actually run and execute our JavaScript code. So once you download the installer for Node.js, you just want to open it up and click through the entire installation process. All of the default uh, settings should be fine for what we're going to do in this course. And so now that we've installed Node.js, the first thing you'll probably want to know is how do we actually run it, right? You probably have the vibe that we kind of installed an application on our computer. However, what you'll need to know is that Node.js isn't a classic application that I can just like search up. So I'm not gonna be able to search up a Node.js over here. Node.js is a very, very special application and I'll show you how to run it in a little bit. So let's hop back into a browser. And now I wanna install what I need to write my code or edit my code and that's called Visual Studio Code. So this application is totally free. So it'll be the first link over here. So it looks like the address is code.visualstudio.com. It's a very popular a code editor. You just want to download and install that application. And like we did before, just go ahead and click through the installer and all of the default settings should be just fine. And so once you have VS Code installed, it actually is a regular application in that it's one you can just search up in your system. So if I want to open up VS Code, I can just search for it. So Visual Studio Code, there it is. Now let's go ahead and open that application. And so Node.js is what we use to actually execute and run our code. Then Visual Studio Code is what we use to actually write and produce our code. So we're going to be greeted with this screen uh, by default. Looks like we just have a nice welcome page. And so what I'll do is just X that out and I'll give you a quick tour of what Visual Studio Code can do. So the first thing I'll want to do is really give myself a place to kind of work and store all of my files. So maybe back on my desktop, what I can do is just create a folder. So here I'll just call it my first code. You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure that you save this folder somewhere you remember. So I know this is just on my regular desktop. And once I have uh, that folder created inside of VS Code, what I can do is open up that folder. So if I hover in the top left, I can hit File and I can hit Open. It'll be very similar on Windows as well, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And what I'll do is locate my folder, which is on my desktop right over here, and just click on that folder once and then hit open. And I'll open up that folder uh, in this VS Code session, right? So how do I know if I'm inside of the correct folder? Well, on the left-hand view now, if I'm in this like first tab, right? I should see the name of my folder, right? And so there's nothing actually inside of my folder, so this looks empty. But from here, what I can do is create a file. So using this like paper icon over here, I'll create a file and I'll call it my first program.js. It's going to be really important that you create uh, this file with a name that ends in .js. It's just a JavaScript extension because later on we're going to actually execute this code uh, using JavaScript, right? When you name your file, I also recommend that you don't put any weird characters like spaces. It's going to make it a little harder to run. So usually in place of spaces, I do things like use hyphens instead of spaces or sometimes underscores as well. So here I have my first program.js. It's just a file and I have it open. Like I said earlier, VS Code is the application I can use to just write my code. And so since I have this file open, what I can do is actually just write some stuff inside. The first thing I want to do is do console.log. I'll explain what this does in a little bit. Open up some parentheses and then also end it with a semicolon. But within those parentheses, what I'll do is write some text. So I'll use some double quotes, let's say for now. So using double quotation marks, right? And then inside of that, I'll just say, hello. 
Cool, so this will be our first program. And what's gonna happen here? Well, a few things you'll notice is uh, I have my file. It contains a single line right now, right? JavaScript is gonna execute this line of code and it's gonna recognize the console.log command. And so if this is your first time programming or just your first time using JavaScript, what console.log does is just print out some text to the screen, right? So I'm console.logging the text, hello. Uh, a few things to note here, what you definitely want to do is make sure you use quotation marks around this text. So it's gonna be a common mistake and you will want to end this line with a semicolon. So when it comes to programming in JavaScript, you can think of semicolon as kind of like uh, the period. It sort of like ends a statement and you're definitely gonna use a lot of semicolons as you write your JavaScript programs. And so this is my first program and now I'm actually ready to execute it. Uh, one thing I do wanna bring up, let's say I have my file changed. So let's say I edit something, so I add another exclamation point. What you're gonna notice is in VS Code, it's gonna give me like a dot uh, in the tab for this file to symbolize that I have not saved this file yet. So there's a change I have not saved. What you definitely wanna do is make sure you save this file. So if you want, you can head to the top left, hit File, Save, or the shortcut would be Command S for my Mac people and Control S for my Windows people, right? So definitely make sure that your file is saved. You know you're saved when you don't have a dot, right? So now that I have this file saved, I actually want to run this file. And so what you can do is hit the shortcut control and then hit the back tick or tilde key. The back tick or tilde key is that key that's usually right next to your number row, right? So it should just be around the left of the one key on your keyboard. And it's going to open the integrated terminal uh, in VS Code. So you should see this little window down at the bottom. And what you'll notice is it'll probably give you the name of your folder that you're currently in right next to it. So depending on the type of machine you're on right now, this terminal view may look a little different uh, for you. My personal machine is actually a MacBook. So if you're on Mac, you'll probably see almost something identical to this. But if you're on another machine like Windows, it probably will look a little different. However, don't sweat it. In a little bit, I'm actually gonna open up my Windows machine and I'll show you these same steps as well, right? So right now, this will actually be for my Mac people. And what I have open is a terminal. And what that lets me do is just interact with my computer in a text-based way. And so I'm gonna click inside of this terminal and the first thing I wanna do is type in ls, just the letters ls, and then hit enter. So this is gonna be our first terminal command and what it does is just list out, it stands for list, just lists out all of the current files and folders that I currently have access to, right? So notice that right now my terminal is inside of my first code, the folder, right? And the only file inside of my first code is my first program. So that's why I see it printed out now over here. If I wanted to, let's say I go back into my left-hand view and I create another file, I'll call it my second program.js. I'll just be sure to save that program, it won't be anything inside. If I run ls again, it's also gonna list out that second uh, program. All right, so for now, I'll kind of ignore my second program. I'll just focus my attention on my first program. And so now that my terminal is right next to my first program, right, I'm right next to the file in that when I do ls, I can just print out the name of that file. If I wanna execute it, here's where node comes into play, right? So if you have node installed, what you should be able to do is type in node, hit a space, and then write the name of your file, right? So I'm just gonna type out my first program, right? And when I hit enter, what it's going to do is actually execute the code inside of that file, right? And if there are no mistakes, in other words, if your code looks almost identical to what I have here, then you should just see the message hello uh, printed out. So let's say I edited my file. So let me add another message. So I'm gonna write another console.log and I'm gonna say goodbye, everyone. And I'll be sure to spell it right for the first part and also add a semicolon. And again, make sure that you have your like letters, your text are wrapped up in some quotation marks. And then I'll run this program again, being sure that I have saved this file, right? So make sure you save it. And then you can just run that same command, node my first program dot JS. When I do that, now I see both of my messages printed out. All right, so as promised for my Windows people, let me show you how your VS Code will actually look. And so hopefully you already have installed Node.js and Visual Studio Code. I'll just open up VS Code. And for the most part, the entire view looks about the same, except in the actual terminal, right? So let me go ahead and actually go through the same motions. Let me minimize this and I'll create a folder for myself. So I'll say new folder and I'll call it code stuff. And then what I'll do is hop into my VS Code. Let me start by opening up uh, that folder. So I'll go top left, open folder, and I'll find that folder on my desktop. It's where I put it at least. And I'll select that folder. 
right? Now VS Code's opening inside of that code stuff folder. Let me create myself a really quick file to mess with. And so here inside of my VS Code, I just have a very similar program. All this is print out the message, hello Windows. So I'll give my semicolon. And what I also wanna do is make sure that I saved this file. And now at this point, I can use the same shortcut. So I can do control tick, which is gonna be again, the key to the left probably of your number one key. And I'll open up our integrated terminal uh, inside of VS Code. Notice how some of this stuff looks pretty different from what I saw on Mac, but really what it does is identical, right? So your commands are gonna be slightly different if you're on Windows. So right now I'm inside of this code stuff uh, folder. If I want to list out all of the files and folders I can currently see inside of this location, what you'll want to do is actually type in dir, right? So dir is the equivalent of ls when you're on Mac. So when I run this, it's actually gonna show me uh, all of the files I can currently see, which is really just one file, uh, mycode.js. And again, of course, if I create another file like my other code, dot js and i ran that command again dir i'm going to see both of those files but from here everything is actually identical at this point so if i wanted to run myco.js i just type in node space and then the name of my file right myco.js all right so hopefully my windows people found that helpful now back to our regularly scheduled programming and so here I am back in my Mac, and what I wanna do is just emphasize a few things about this program, right? So looking at my first program, you'll notice that it has two lines uh, inside of it, right? And both of these lines print out different messages. When I execute this code using node, uh, my first program.js, it's just gonna run these lines in order, right? So definitely the first thing I can recognize is the very first message I print out is hello, and the second message is goodbye everyone, right? So in general, our code is going to run in a top-down fashion for now. And along with that, what I can do is also comment out lines of code. In other words, let's say I wanted to temporarily not run this second line over here. What I can do is go to the front of the line, just using my arrow keys or clicking. And what I can do is put two slashes in front of it. So I can do slash slash. And you'll notice that uh, in VS Code, I'll actually will like dim or change the color of those lines. And I'll be sure to save my file now. So if I save this code and now I run it, it's actually going to ignore uh, line number two. Right, let's say I had another console.log afterwards. So let's say I wanted to just print out, whoa, if I run this code, it's truly just gonna ignore that line, right? So I only see hello and whoa printed out because these lines that I have with double slashes in front of it are effectively ignored uh, in JavaScript. So if I want to bring line two uh, back inside, what I can do is just delete those two slashes, right? Be sure to save my program. And then I could just run it again. And now I should see all three messages printed out. A nice little shortcut you'll find useful when you comment out code is if you highlight a selection, so here I have some code highlighted, you can hold command or control and hit slash and it will actually comment out that entire chunk, right? In a similar way, if you have a selection highlighted and you do command slash again, you can actually comment it in and out rapidly, right? So this is how I can quickly comment out chunks of my code. And this is gonna be pretty useful because when we have comments, we can you know temporarily ignore code, but we can also write some English notes in our code, right? So what I can say is maybe at the top of my file, I'll say, this is my first program. Console.log will print something to the screen. So we're gonna be utilizing comments quite a bit in this course, whether it's like temporarily ignore code or even just annotate our code to kind of explain what's happening under the hood. So last few things I wanna show you in this lecture are just some really valuable shortcuts you'll find inside of the terminal. So you may find it pretty tedious to have to like type out uh, like this command, like node and then the name of your file uh, every single time you wanna run the code. Instead, what you can do is hit up on your arrow pad and what that'll do is give you a history of the commands you entered previously, right? So for example, if I keep hitting up, I can see all the commands I entered and then you can just you know find the command you want to run and then hit enter and actually run that command, right? So by hitting up on your arrow pad, if you're inside of your terminal, you get a history of your previous command. So that's gonna be super useful. What you can also do is use some auto completion inside of your terminal, right? So for example, let's say I go into my second program.js. Now let's say I just write some random code inside. So I'm just gonna console.log cool. And I'll be sure to save this program, right? Make sure it's saved. From there, let's say I wanted to quickly run uh, this program. Of course, it's not gonna be in my history because I didn't actually run my second program.js yet. So what I can do is just manually type in node and begin typing the name of my file, right? So I'll type in my and then 
sec. And what I can do is just hit tab at this point. It's actually going to be able to autocomplete the name of this file, right? Because it's able to detect, you know, what files you currently have access to, right? Recall that if I do ls, the only files that I have access to right now are just my first program.js and my second program.js. And so again, to do autocomplete, what you just want to do is type in enough of your file name and then hit tab and it should finish it out. All right, programmers, so that's all I got for this first initial lecture. So what we went over was some basic installations for what we need to actually write code and run it in this course. We also used VS Code to write and run our very first programs, right? And so in the next video, we'll have an exercise to do together to really have us practice writing and running our programs. And so I'll see you in the next one.